Hello again everyone. I looked all over YouTube and all that stuff and I have started pulling my hair out because I realized that there isn't really a tutorial on how to make a hair rerouting tool for your dolls. And it's kind of a bummer because a lot of websites are overcharging for these things and the way that I've made mine is so simple. Anyone can do it. It's fairly kid friendly as long as you know your parents adult supervision because it does require some needles um, and messing with nail clippers and all that stuff. So anyway, I wanted to provide a super awesome tutorial. YouTube, here it is. It's so easy you're not even going to believe it. You're probably, if you're crafty, already going to have all this stuff around your house. So don't even worry about running out the door. You know I'm using my creepy cool forceps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's going to happen. Anyway, um, I just grabbed whatever doll head right now to show you how this tool works. I hope this is a useful tutorial for you guys here on YouTube because like I said you gotta see some things to be able to do them and so even though there are great blog posts out there and things like that there aren't really great videos about how to make a hair reroute tool that is easy, simple to use, and fun. Anyway here we go. Okay, so in this video I am going to focus mostly on the handsies so that you guys can see what's going on. Right now I'm flailing around an X-Acto knife. That's never a good idea, kids. Don't try this at home. Alright, so let's talk about your materials. So the materials you are going to need, that you have to have to do this, are needles. Um, the best needle for hair rerouting is going to be the type of needle that um, people use for uh, what do you call that? Cross stitching? And it's like a, a much thicker, bigger needle. I don't have any of those, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to show you guys with a regular needle that has a pretty big loop on it. These are very cheap and easy to replace. So, like I said, if you're crafty, you'll just have these hanging out at your house. And then the second thing we're going to need is something that can cut through the needle. I use a nail clipper because that's just worked. This can destroy a nail clipper. I'm letting you know in advance, so don't pick your favorite nail clipper. But, um, yeah, when you cut the needle, sometimes the metal piece will just, like, fly out, like, at your face. So put on your little safety goggles, or don't do this with an adult, or whatever. Just be careful. You, you know what I'm talking about. Don't be stupid. Just be careful. So we got our needles. We got our nail clipper. Then you're going to need the secret tool which is an X-Acto knife. I know, it's so simple. I'm like, okay, so all the rerouting tools I've seen are like, they have a base of wood, or people are just using the needle, or they're trying to, I don't know, it's crazy. It's just too much work. I figured this out forever ago, like five or six years ago, and it's all I've been using. X-Acto knife is the key. You must have an X-Acto knife to make the reroute tool that I'm going to show you right now. Um, if you don't and you want to get creative, that's cool. I hope that this inspires you. The type of X-Acto knife that you kind of have to use is the smaller, thinner ones. You can't be using, like, you know, one of the really thick ones like this because it doesn't have the right um, top to it. You can't uh, put the needle in here securely. It'll move around. So, here we go. Super easy. Bam, bam, bam. We're going to just, like, do this. Not sure how well this will show up on camera. The one I chose is this one. It's got a pretty big loop on top of it. So I think it'll be great for what we're doing today. We're going to... Whoop. Come back here, exacto knife. Stay with the forceps. All right. We're going to grab our nail clipper. And where the loop is. Uh, let me put something, like, really plain on like in front of me. This shoebox cover will do nicely. Alright. And I've got my little needle here. And we've got our, we have butterfingers, but that's okay. Alright, so here's the other important part. You're gonna cut the loop off, basically, so that you may get an open Y shape. I hope you guys can see this. I know it's super tiny, but you got to cut that at an angle. 
it just works out better for everyone involved. So, like I said, be super careful because you don't want this metal flying into your eyeballs right now. Here we go, we're gonna clip it. So, do you guys, do, I hope you guys saw what happened just then. The uh, nail clipper doesn't always snap it, as you can see, but as you also would have seen, it's pretty easy to just like separate the two by bending very slightly back and forth. And again, this motion is kind of where you get into the danger of flicking into your eye. So be careful. Now, I set this nail clipper aside. As you can see, we've got this little Y shape going on, but it has one side longer than the other. So there you go. The next step of our process is going to be put your needle down, don't lose it. And we're going to twist the top of the X-Acto knife fairly loose, right? And pull out the blade. So be very careful. This is super sharp. Mine's fairly new, so it is. it could definitely cut you. Set your blade aside. I have an X-Acto knife kit to keep it all secure. If you don't have one of those, you definitely want to wrap the blade in something before you put it away every time, like tissue paper or something, so that you never reach into your craft box and cut yourself. Now, the next part's up to you, but uh, some you could cut this little point off here, just so you don't even have a pointy end to worry about anymore. Um, or if you're doing this for kids, it can't hurt to cut the pointy end off just to get it out of the way and get rid of it. Just remember to throw it away so it doesn't end up on the floor where someone can step on it. So we're going to, if you can see that, the X-Acto knife is open now. So we're going to put the pointy end of the needle, not the part we just cut, the pointy end, into the X-Acto knife hole here. In between where the, the lines meet, you know. So right smack dab in the middle there. That's all I'm doing right now. Put it in as far as it will go. And go ahead and twist around and around and around until you feel that you can't go any further and the broken end is sticking out the top of the exacto handle. So this this literally you're done this is the rerouting tool so I'm gonna show you guys how to use it real quick just on um, one or two hair plugs so you get a good idea of how it functions if you've already used a reroute tool I'm sure you're just sitting there like oh my god so easy I'm so glad she showed me this <laughs> because it's really simple and these break a lot and often the little needle because they're pretty delicate and small um, and these are just so cheap to replace. So don't go out and buy a reroute tool if you've got an X-Acto knife, a nail clipper, and some needles laying around it at the house. Like, here you go. Done. You're welcome. Alright, so let's talk real quick about rerouting Barbie's head. I'm just gonna have at it. That's how this is gonna go down. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys another time how to get all the hair out of the head. Um, that'll be a root tutorial. Um, but you've already finished step one, which is make your tool. And all I'm going to do for the sake of showing you how your new tool works is I'm going to give Barbie some little highlights right here. Here is that hair chunk. This is just left over from... Like, I bought this wig for Jasha, the ball-jointed doll over here, and had this, like, long mullet tail to it. I just cut it off, and I've been keeping the hair for a tutorial such as this one. Alright, so I just grab a small amount of hair. You can kind of see, compared to my thumb, like, what the thickness is there. Not very is the answer. I wrap it around my finger like this. I take my rerouting tool... It's going to be a little bit hard to show you um, because I can't really see what you're seeing. I'm doing this with a tiny, tiny digital camera. 
but I'm just going to take the long end of my reroute tool and I'm going to slide it under without hurting myself. You just pop up the hair a little bit. Some people wet the hair to make this an easier process. I'm just being quick about it. Um, so you're just going to slide this under. Another good idea is to wear a thimble um, just because you can poke your finger. This is pretty sharp after you've cut it. I hope you guys can see this. We'll go over it again when I do reroute later. But for now, this is the best I can show you. So that's on there. Pull it tight. There we go. Should look like this. We're going to pick where we want Barbie's highlight to be. I'm just going to throw it in wherever. You want to pick an existing hole and you're going to push both of the points of your reroute tool into said hole. Twist slightly if it's giving you a little trouble. All right. Now here's the little trick. A lot of people at this point will tell you, it looks like Barbie's like just, we stabbed her head. Anyway, a lot of people will tell you at this point to like pull it through the neck there and knot it so that it won't pop out or whatever. Um, that's like if you're trying to make a doll that someone can play with a lot where they're going to brush her hair a lot and all that mess, that's what you kind of need to do unfortunately and it's time consuming and annoying. But for my purposes, if I was going to reroot a doll, it would be mainly for display um, or very light grooming and play. So all I do to secure the hair inside the head is I let go of my thumb, I twist the rerouting tool a little bit around, pull it out. There you have it. It's pretty firmly in there. I'm not tugging very hard, but just to show you guys. So now Barbie's got this awesome highlight. Oh yes! Oh fabulous! She's like a cockatiel. It's awesome. Anyway, so yeah, what you would typically do is just go around, add all the highlights or, you know, reroute the whole head or whatever you're trying to do. And then you would dip it all in hot water so that you can style it. So that is how you make this super easy reroute tool that you can easily make and replace as much as needed. And um, this is the only way I've ever rooted doll hair. It's just much sturdier. The needle never goes anywhere. I, in the past five years, have only replaced a needle once off one of these things. So anyway, I hope my tutorial helped you. I hope the camera was in focus enough for you to see all this tiny stuff I was doing. And um, definitely let me know if you have any comments. Anyways guys, that's the end of my video. I'm like holding my camera because I had it at that weird angle, but thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helps. I hope you guys are now changing your doll's hair colors to be all colors of the rainbow and just having a great time doing it. If you are a kid and you got an adult to do this, now you can change your dolly's hair as much as you want. And if you're an adult collector, now you can finally create that custom doll that is just one of a kind for you. Anyway, thank you so much you guys. Have a great day. And remember to subscribe and give me thumbs up if you're enjoying the macabre shop videos. Bye! So, so gorgeous right now. Like, I know you're just jealous.